well-rounded, solid tools about how to approach life. Mm. Um, I believe that their approach is actually from a psychic basis, but you wouldn't know it at first because they sound so uh, pragmatic in the wonderful way they create these tools for living. Mm -hmm. I was with them for about two and a half years. And then when I came to Oakland, I studied at the Reunion Center in Walnut Creek with Judy Simone Wright and did master psychic training with her. Mm. And with her and Evelino, we explored many different kinds and avenues and ways of accessing that psychic energy. Mm. Very nice, very nice. And so you put all of that together into the current body of work. Yes, all yes. of that, all of that. Everything I've ever done, experienced, uh, looked at, read, becomes, and you know, even the media, child of the media, movies, television, mm -hmm. becomes part of uh, who I am because it's part of who we all are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're just combinations of who we've come in contact with and the ideas that we've been exposed to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're bringing our own personality to it. So what advice would you give others about doing this work? Because I'm sure that there are many people out in our audience who are thinking, you know, I wonder if I'm psychic or can I read the tarot? What kind of advice would you give to them if they were about to set out on yeah. a journey like this? Well, it's, it's really easy. You know, for those people who are actually watching, I want to tell you, you are psychic already. You don't have to study to be psychic. You already are psychic. You're born psychic. I think of it like you're remembering to be psychic. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Because we already are. Our brains are wired to be psychic to begin with. Mm -hmm. And so it's being comfortable, practicing, um, being open, uh, expanding the mind. It's all those things together that then allow, I believe, the psychic energy, the psychic experience to really take roost in oneself where we use it then as a tool just like we use our cognitive powers as a tool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's kind of like being open to the school of life and, yes. and, and all of its different layers. So is there a particular target audience or niche that you have these days, or do you just open yourself up to whoever comes and sits at your table? Well, you know, this year especially, I have to say, I have been getting the most amazing group of people come see me that I've ever wished for. You know, the first five years I did readings, um, I have to say it was challenging for me, but then my energy was challenging. I was still accepting myself and accepting my own abilities. Mm -hmm. This last, actually, probably more like three years, but especially this year, I have to say, hands down, everyone who's come to see me has been wonderful, loving, sensitive, smart, intelligent. They are the best clients I could wish for. Mm -hmm. It's made this year especially a joy. Great, great. Now, are there any particular profession or gender? Oh, of they are just all over the place. Yeah. yeah. I think generally women are just a little more open mm -hmm. to psychic, sensitive, emotional feeling things. Mm -hmm. And so that tends to be a larger percentage of people are women. And yet, like even when I was in Palm Springs this weekend working mm -hmm. a wonderful event, mm -hmm. I had a large number of men come see me. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting because, you know, with men you have to read a little different yeah. than with a gal. And so I had to practice how to get the information to them in a way they could hear, because mm -hmm. that's always a challenge. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly does make one more broad when you have both of the, yeah. the genders coming in, so it, that's very good. Are there any particular lessons that you have um, distilled that you could present to people from doing this work? You know, like cer certain gurus talk, talk to us about being loving and open to others. So what kind of lessons have you gathered to share with our, our audience? I think the biggest challenge, I think for myself, and I and I'm, would like to speak for most readers, I, I don't know if I can really do that, mm -hmm. is to get our own ego self out of the way for the real message to come through. Mm -hmm. Because I find that um, even in the reading process, I have a university degree, I like to consider myself a smart person, and so sometimes I'll get a message and I'll be looking at the person across from me and thinking, I do not want to say that message because it doesn't make sense to my logical mind. Mm -hmm. And so I have to exercise my ego out of the way so that I can deliver the message. And I found actually when I do deliver the message that's presented, either from my guides, the cards, the sensations, mm -hmm. it always makes sense to the person who's asking. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And just it just goes to show that our ego sometimes is a barrier to the truth. 
Well, sure. Especially if you consider yourself smart, your mm -hmm. ego wants you to be smart. Yeah. You don't want to ever be wrong. <laughs> so you have to tell your ego to shut up and you know, give the message right or wrong. <laughs> exactly. So what part of the states did you grow up in? California. You grew up in California, so this is comfortable for you oh, being I in this environment. Oh, I love California. Yeah. I can, uh, you mentioned Orem, Utah as being a place where you had to go to the back of the room to, yes. <laughs> to do the cards. So California is more open and it's it it's more uh, supportive. Oh yes, absolutely. Of, of, of the work that you do. Do you have any appearances coming up? Oh yes. Well, um, I'll be doing the Holistic Living Fairs in uh, Santa Barbara, Ventura, mm -hmm. and then that's this coming weekend, and then in Fresno the following weekend. Right. And of course, all the dates and and schedule times and places are at my website. Great. And you should also mention that sometimes it's possible to get free passes to these expos. That's a very good thing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. At my website, as well as others, yes. there are uh, free passes. You just go to the appearance area and you'll see a big button. And instead of paying $5 to get in, you can get in free. And that's a way that those of us who are working these events mm -hmm. are helping our clients and people who are interested get a little bit more out of the experience. Yes. So um, what would you like people to remember about the experience they have with you when someone comes to you for a reading? For example, we've had several people call in and talk to you about um, work, about love, about relationship with siblings, et cetera, et cetera. What would you like them to remember about the feeling or the impression of, of sitting down with Joseph Martin? Well, I have often said to people I read for that I'm not like every other reader. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to say what's actually presented, the message that is actually coming through. Mm -hmm. Good or bad, happy, sad, what's here is what I'm going to deliver. Mm -hmm. And so I want them to know that because it's, I think it's very bad karma to do anything else. I think we're, our job is to deliver the message as given. Mm -hmm. With that, I really try to inspire them to realize that no matter what the obstacle is that may be presented, whether in the cards or in their life, that they can still overcome that by stepping around it, patching it up, or going over the top. <laughs> that's, that's similar to the reading I did in the beginning. You know, you have your path, you have the hurdle, you have the allies to help you get over it so yes. you can get to that goal at the end. Well, that's wonderful. So there's a sense of hope and optimism that you would like them to be left with. Then. Well, I, very much so. And, mm -hmm. you know, speaking of which, you know, even with my cards, you know, designing the deck, doing all the artwork, mm -hmm. because I found certain tarot decks, for instance, to be really dark mm -hmm. in their approach visually and the way they were constructed. And even when I worked on this art myself, I really wanted it to be inspiring, bright, powerful. Almost like when you turned over a card, it would be like turning over a light. Mm -hmm. No matter what it was, there would be something bright and vibrant there. Mm. Let's talk about the design of your cards. In most row decks, there are 78 cards. The structure is the minor and the major arcana, the people cards. And so with your deck, how many cards are there? Well, with this deck specifically, there actually are 80 cards, two mm -hmm. more than what you'll find in what some people would call traditional tarot. Mm -hmm. Now, when tarot first came out, there was no standard of the amount of cards. It was all the way from 35 to 56 to 78. Yeah. Over the years, that's kind of settled on 78 for numero numerological reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a big word to use, I guess. Um, with my deck, there's two additions. One is the blank card, mm -hmm. and this blank card is blank because sometimes we don't know. Yeah. And when the blank card appears in the outcome position, it actually would say, not gonna tell ya. <laughs> really. That's wonderful, not gonna tell ya. Yeah. <laughs> because we're, you know, we can ask, but that doesn't mean we're gonna get the answer. Yes. And then the other card, which is so great, is the multiverse card. Mm -hmm. Because you know, right now, in science, they're working to prove the reality of an 11 dimensional universe that we're in. And this is five miles from Lake Geneva, Switzerland, in Lund, Switzerland, mm -hmm. where they have the world's largest man-made machine, a particle accelerator. Mm -hmm. My multiverse card mirrors what science is now showing us as that's going to be true within our lifetime, mm -hmm. that we live in a multi-dimensional universe. Well, psychics and mystics have been saying that for centuries, that we're multi-dimensional beings. And science seems to be catching up with us within this last few, well, this last decade with the quantum physicist and what the bleep do we know and all of yeah. that sort of thing. 
So it's interesting that spirit would give you that heads up, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were to take a look at the back of your card, what are the symbols that are, are happening there? Um, they're just the four elements, earth, air, fire, water. Maybe you want to hold it up and see.